To begin this video, I will provide a brief overview of Darwinian evolution in order to contrast it with Lamarckian evolution. I will then discuss why the field of genetics posed major challenges to Lamarck's views, and how the recent discovery of epigenetics may lead to a Lamarckian resurgence. We will conclude by looking at a case study, which may illustrate how Lamarckian concepts could feasibly lead to evolutionary change over time. There are three fundamental requirements in order for Darwinian evolution by natural selection to take place. One, traits, for example height, need to vary amongst the organisms in the population. If all of the organisms had identical traits, then there would be nothing for natural selection to differentially act upon. Two, these varying traits must be heritable. They must be capable of being transmitted from generation to generation. Three, some of these heritable varying traits must lead to increases in reproduction. If these three requirements are met, evolution by natural selection must occur. The heritable variations which lead to reduced reproduction will decrease in frequency over time, and the heritable variations which lead to increased reproduction will increase in frequency over time. The changes in the frequency of the genetic underpinnings of these traits called alleles, which are different versions of genes, is what defines evolution. The environment naturally selects, in a blind fashion, the heritable versions of traits that lead to greater reproduction as compared to organisms who lack those traits. Over many generations of differential reproduction, evolution will occur at the population level. In 1802, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck proposed an alternative view of how organisms change through time. He believed that the environment modified traits and that those modified traits were then passed on to offspring. This view came to be known as the inheritance of acquired characteristics, and later known as Lamarckian evolution or Lamarckism. After numerous challenges to the theory, the final nail in the coffin of Lamarckian evolution appeared to come from the discovery of modern genetics, which showed that acquired characteristics do not change our DNA sequences and thus cannot be passed on to future generations. To give you a brief example contrasting Darwinian and Lamarckian evolution, consider the evolution of long-distance running capabilities in humans. A Darwinian natural selection hypothesis might propose that the ability to run for long distances is heritable and varies amongst organisms in a particular population and that running long distances confers reproductive advantages. As such, humans who were better distance runners survived and reproduced more successfully, and so they left more offspring on average, and therefore the alleles of the genes which code for better distance running became more and more frequent in the population over time. Lamarck, on the other hand, would have proposed that the individual humans who ran more during their lifetimes would develop better and better distance running capabilities, and that when these individuals had offspring, the offspring would inherit the running advantages that were acquired by the parent throughout their life. Thus, over time, as humans run more and more, our bodies will adjust, and in such a way as to facilitate better distance running, and these environmentally induced modifications will be passed on to future generations, leading to excellent distance running capabilities over time. Lamarck's ideas were both interesting and plausible, but as we became more and more knowledgeable about the process of heritability, as we discovered the field of genetics, we learned that there was simply no mechanism of heritability for acquired characteristics. Simply put, 
The environment does not change the genes that we have. Run and run as you may. Your body may adjust, but you will never alter your genetic base pairs, and thus you will never pass on all of your running effort to your offspring. But in recent decades, a new discovery is changing our understanding of how our genes impact our traits, or phenotypes. While the environment cannot change what genes we have, we now know that it can alter our epigenetics. Epigenetics refers to mechanisms which alter the regulation and expression of genes. Such mechanisms can include the chemical modification of the DNA structure, known as methylation, as well as the modification of histone proteins which DNA coils around. And there are additional mechanisms beyond these two. One epigenetic mechanism in particular, DNA methylation, can be heritable and thus passed on to future generations. When a methyl group modifies the DNA structure, it switches genes off, and this can have profound effects upon trait variations, particularly if this epigenetic modification is active during crucial developmental periods. There are studies showing that DNA methylation changes are capable of persisting in plants for hundreds of generations which shows that despite epigenetic changes being reversible, they can be quite durable through time as well. Diaz and Ressler conducted experiments which demonstrated the potential power of transgenerational epigenetic changes. They were interested in studying how trauma can affect behavior and neuroanatomy in subsequent generations. Mice were traumatized with electrical shocks, while being conditioned to associate the electrical shocks with the scent of either propanol or acetophenol. These are smells which mice are not naturally afraid of. After successful conditioning, mice showed a fear-based reaction to the smell of these chemicals alone, without the need for further electrical shocks. Diaz and Ressler then proceeded to have these conditioned male mice mate with normal females. They discovered that for the next two generations of mice, the F1 and F2 generations, offspring showed a similar fearful response to the smells which their fathers had been traumatized with. Even though the subsequent generations had never experienced the trauma and had never been exposed to the smells before, and even though normal mice do not show a fearful response to these smells in the first place. Furthermore, the experimenters showed that there were significant neuroanatomical modifications of the subsequent generation's olfactory systems, which they suspect may be caused by changes in DNA methylation. In other words, epigenetic changes. The experimenters suggest that such transgenerational epigenetic changes could be an important mechanism for priming subsequent generations to be particularly sensitive to features of the environment that will likely be important in their lives, and this could therefore affect their survival and reproduction. For example, offspring who are able to have an instinctive fear of a smell which led to frequent and consistent physical and psychological trauma in the parental generation, may be more likely to avoid the bodily and psychological harm in their own environment and thus improve their odds at surviving and passing their genes, as well as epigenetic methylation patterns, on to subsequent generations. So as we have discussed, Epigenetics can affect the variation of traits, and these variations can be heritable. Now, if these heritable variations are able to provide fitness advantages, 
by preparing subsequent generations to be especially sensitive to important environmental cues, as Diaz and Ressler 2013 posited, then clearly such epigenetic modifications satisfy the three criteria for evolution by natural selection to occur. When these criteria are met, evolution by natural selection must occur. So, while these changes may not be as durable or as potent as cumulative changes in allele frequencies, it appears that there is likely a role for such epigenetic mechanisms in the evolutionary process. Skinner termed this new perspective Neo-Lamarckian, and he calls for a new synthesis of evolutionary biology, which integrates epigenetics-based Neo-Lamarckian perspectives with classical Neo-Darwinian genetic-based evolution. So, while it is correct that humans who just so happen to have genes which led to better distance running, would have had higher fitness and left more offspring on average. But what Neil Lamarckian concepts suggest is that it may also be the case that humans who run a lot may lead to stable and heritable epigenetic modifications, which could lead to the offspring being better runners as well. We can think of our genome as consisting of a massive toolkit full of different tools and our epigenetics as a complex pattern for how the organism uses those tools. This is fascinating because it suggests that individuals with identical genetics may have differential reproductive success based on the patterns of the expression of those genes. If this view is correct, then natural selection may not only be acting at the genetic level, but it may also be acting at the epigenetic level selecting for genes as well as patterns of gene expression, which lead to differential reproductive success. So it turns out, Lamarck may not have been completely wrong after all. We really can inherit environmentally facilitated characteristics acquired by those who came before us. I believe that this research holds the promise of one day treating supposedly irreversible mental illnesses such as schizophrenia, which requires a genotype by environment interaction in order to manifest. Such studies may also shed additional light upon the phenomena of intergenerational trauma, which afflicts so many communities with histories of long-term violent subjugation.